Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm showing you um, how to go about uh, using Google Sheets to record your data. Um, and then specifically what I want you to do for a reaction rates experiment. So Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel, either one, but probably Google Sheets because you can access it online and share it with a partner is how I would like you uh, recording your data. If you would, if you do want to use pencil and paper, you can do that, uh, but you're going to have to put it in here anyway. So uh, make yourself a new blank sheet and first off, go ahead and give that a title. We'll call this Reaction Rates Lab and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my columns. Um, now one one thing that uh, we're, we'll talk about next week is that your independent variable, the thing you are changing, should always be the first column you write. So our first independent variable was particle size, um, and then your dependent variable should be the column to the right side of that, um, the next one. So that was our reaction time in seconds. Um, and I'm actually going to put the name of the group member over here. And then for our second experiment, uh, we did, I'll, I'll do name, and then we changed the temperature of the water um, in degrees Celsius. Um, the degrees symbol actually goes first, and it's kind of annoying on this. You have to um, select an O, a lowercase O, and then go to format, and uh, you want to make it a superscript, which for some reason I can't figure out where that is right now. Um, this is embarrassing. I will figure that out later. Um, and then, um, so we've got our independent variable, temperature of water, and the dependent variable was reaction time in seconds. Okay, I'm just going to make that look a little bit nicer by um, doing that. And I'm going to give it a... So it's nice to make it look orderly, neat, nice and neat. Uh, same thing over here. We will put an underline there and make it bold. Come on, bold. There we go. Okay. Um, so we've got our uh, we've got our reaction rates lab here now. Um, kind of our setup for how this should look. Once again, we always put our IV here and our DV um, right next to that. That'll make sense um, later when we start graphing that. So I want to uh, just give you an example of what I want you doing for Monday. Um, so I'd put my name, Mr. Barkland, and for particle size for um, whole. And actually, what I'm going to do here differently, rather than writing whole and saying reaction time it took uh, 59 seconds or for Mr. Barkland, for half, say it only took 36 seconds. Um, I'm going to do something different there I, I, uh, in a second. I want to point out a few things. First off, note that I'm just writing 59 or 36 in there. Um, Google Sheets, when you graph it, doesn't know how to read it. If you wrote 59 S or 59 seconds, it doesn't know how to read that as a number. It has to just be that 59 in there. And that actually brings up my other point about we can't um, actually write whole or half there. Um, if we want to graph it, we're going to actually have to do something a little bit different. So um, what I'm going to ask you to do is 1 represents the whole, 0.5 represents half. Um, hopefully you can all figure out that a quarter would be represented by 0.25. And powdered, uh, we're going to call 0 0.01. Um, and then you can kind of input the data. So let's say when you put it in, in quarters, um, it only took you know, 30 seconds, and powder, it took maybe 25 seconds. Um, so this is what your data should look like when you put this in over the weekend. Really key that you have just numbers, no letters. Uh, for the temperature of water, same thing, uh, Mr. Parkland. Temperature of water, let's say the first time it was 80.9 degrees Celsius, and that took... Um, 27 seconds. I want to point out another thing that can give you problems here. Uh, let's say that you used a cooler temperature, maybe you used some ice water. Uh, let's say 6 degrees um, was how cold that water was. So pretty cold. And that took um, 4 minutes and 39 seconds. So hopefully you can figure out that that's not a number that it's going to be able to read. And also, if you put in 4.39, well, your computer is going to think that that's 4.39 seconds. What you would actually have to do is figure out, okay, 4 minutes and 39 seconds, 
How many total seconds is that? Uh, so doing a little bit of uh, back of the envelope uh, math here. Four minutes, 60 seconds per minute. Multiply those together. That should give you um, 240 seconds plus the other 39 seconds that... Uh, the four minutes and 39 seconds and that should give you a total of 279 seconds so you want to keep your units the same if you, if you did seconds up here every single answer needs to be put in in seconds very crucially important so uh, the last thing we're going to do is uh, down here I'm going to actually rename this mesh one down here and then I'm going to actually copy it so duplicate and now we've got a copy of mesh one down here. I can call that mesh two. It's the exact same looking file right now. I'm going to duplicate and make a mesh three. And I will duplicate it one more time and make mesh four. So you want, what I want you to do is I want you to put in the data for your class. Oh, there we go. Um, I want to put, once you put the data for your class, I will eventually combine it for our whole grade. Um, but for right now, I want it organized by which mesh um, you are in. So you're going to put this data in, and then on Monday, we are going to talk, start talking about how we actually graph that data um, and how we label graphs, uh, what, what we can do with that. So um, that is your homework for the weekend, uh, watching this video, and then actually putting your data in here. Thank you very much. See you guys Monday.